Hello, good afternoon. So I'm going to share my screen so you can see my presentation. Please just let me know if you can see it. I hope, uh, can you see it? Uh, maybe, Jan, can you confirm that? Yes, everything all right. Yes, yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's good. So welcome. Uh, my name is Zana Vakunova. I'm from uh, from Arnica as well. Uh, I'm a coordinator of international projects, uh, mainly working in Bosnia and Herzegovina, but also in other countries. And actually, before working for Arnica, I worked as a coordinator of uh, another coalition, Green Circle. Uh, so today I will just briefly talk about about uh, two examples. Uh, I will just introduce what coalitions can be good for, what type of coalition we have, and then I very briefly will introduce uh, you uh, into into the experience that I had with Green Circle, and that then another one, which is uh, the coalition for protection of rivers that. Uh, uh, we together with our partners uh, created in Bosnia and Herzegovina to tackle the problem of uh, hydropower plant construction. Uh, I'm a little bit sick, so I apologize. I hope I will not lose my voice during the presentation. Uh, and please, if you have some uh, questions, even during the presentations, or you don't understand something, need to clarify, just maybe raise your hand and I can <clears throat> answer right now. Uh, for some more discussion, there will be space after the after the presentation. So I will be also very happy to discuss with you because I'm not sure what exactly are your needs uh, in which stage of creating coalition or partnerships, uh, broader partnerships you are. So I think uh, it would be very useful later on to have some discussion. Sorry. So uh, here just a short introduction, what uh, what our coalitions are actually good for and why we create co coalitions. <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so basically, of course, one of the primary objective is when we are uh, challenging some bigger issues that uh, actually concern more environmental NGO or all environmental NGO, which typically can be, for example, things like public participation uh, in decision uh, in decision making. Um, in history, for example, in the Czech Republic, uh, we created coalition for Natura 2000 after we entered the European Union and there was a need to negotiate with the state uh, administration about the uh, about the list of uh, protected areas that should be part of the Natura 2000 network. So these are like the typical things why we create coalitions. And of course, if we unite uh, and if we are bigger, uh, we are also better partner for some advocacy and negotiations on national levels or even international levels. So, on levels of uh, international conventions uh, or uh, cross-border, cross-country topics. Um, so this is another reason. Um, demonstrate unity, I think this is quite clear. clear. Uh, if we are bigger and we stand and act in unity, it's, uh, it can be easier uh, to achieve uh, our goals. And the last thing that uh, I wanted to mention, uh, last but not least, it's some uh, it's a mutual support between uh, between the members, which can be also like support not only in terms of like PR or for example legal support, but it can be also emotional support because we all know that being activists can be sometimes very frustrating. Uh, we all sometimes challenge uh, some burnout, uh, sometimes uh, we are dealing with threats or cases of persecution. So just uh, having some support from, uh, from people who are challenging similar problems can be, can be very useful. So that's what I wanted to mention and I will later on also give some examples. 
So basically, uh, there are two types of uh, coalition, uh, the formal coalition and uh, informal coalition. Um, informal coalition uh, usually uh, are created uh, when there is uh, like clear purpose and motivation and clear topic that we need to uh, need to work on. Uh, usually they are less formalized, they don't have a legal entity, and very often they are just temporary. So they last when the topic uh, is actual and uh, after that they uh, they kind of die, uh, which is something what, for example, happened also with the coalition for Natura 2000 that I mentioned uh, after we actually created the list of uh, protected areas. Uh, uh, this uh, coalition was uh, somehow dissolved because there was no need anymore to to work on this. Formal coalitions, uh, it's a different story. Uh, they usually last longer. They are formalized uh, very most of the times or basically every time they have legal subjectivity. Um, both of these forms have some advantages and disadvantages. Um, I will just uh, briefly mention it now and then go to it uh, when I present the examples. But for informal coalition, um, it can be, as I said, sometimes rapid dissolution of the coalition. And with it, you can also lose the, the know-how uh, you gained, or the members gained and so on. Uh, there can be, since uh, since sometimes uh, there are not really uh, formal processes of decision making and creating uh, joint positions, so there can be greater to, to tendency towards some misunderstandings within the members. Uh, and also it's limited fundraising options because if you don't have legal subjectivity, uh, you cannot uh, apply to, to grants, to, men, to most of the grants. Sometimes there are grants that can be, uh, that are open also for informal civic associations, but uh, as you probably know very well, um, many times this is not, uh, not uh, the case. So usually, the coalition depends more on what uh, each individual member fundraise and is willing to give on the development uh, of the coalition. And in the case of uh, formal coalition, uh, there is there is the risk that uh, they can get too formalized and basically just transform into just another. Uh, organization and lose this uh, umbrella capacity, lose, uh, lose the capacity to actually uh, act uh, on or act on behalf of all the members. And sometimes uh, it can happen that uh, they basically have their start to have their own agenda uh, and uh, the coordination and joint position is uh, is is not that strong anymore. Uh, so uh, this is uh, this is the first example. Uh, I will talk about this very little, and I will talk more about informal coalition because that's from what I understood is more of your interest and need. I hope that's that's right. Uh, if not. You can just uh, tell me and we can go back to it uh, in discussion. So Green Circle is uh, actually it's a formal coalition uh, that was founded in November 1989. So basically uh, at the time of uh, Velvet Revolution in the Czech Republic. Um, because it uh, there was a need to actually uh, connect uh, environmental NGOs that at the time there were not many uh, but since uh, but we had many ecological issues many burdens uh, from communist time a lot of pollution and so on um, so there was a need to actually um, connect and uh, and coordinate and of course, at this time, there was also great opportunities to push some environmental, some new environmental policy. Uh, 
since then this coalition is uh, is actually working uh, it's formalized, it has a legal subjectivity, it has its uh, own grounds and own founding. Um, there were time, of course, in history, there were it's, they had uh, their ups and downs. Uh, there were times when uh, the office of Green Circle was very big. There were many people. There was a lot of capacity for to provide uh, education to to the member organization, organize workshop, organize coordination things, and everything like that. And there were also times when there was just one person because of lack of funding. Uh, it was just the director, basically just covering the um, the biggest needs. So now nowadays it's uh, quite uh, stable, I would say. Um, it there is a, like a, nine, more than ninety environmental NGOs are member of this uh, of this. Uh, coalition um, and there are two types of membership one is actually paid and one is unpaid so there are about like 20 maybe 25 uh, members uh, that uh, are under this paid membership and the rest of the associations are uh, are under this unpaid membership what they are actually doing uh, what I think the most important thing is uh, it's some um, advocacy on national level uh, on topics that are important for all environmental NGOs, which can be, for example, the conditions for grants or public participation in environmental decision making and things like that. And what I think is also very important that uh, they serve as a partner for uh, um, for state administration, uh, for for working groups that are under state uh, uh, under state uh, level and so on. So this is uh, this is very important because this uh, coalition is actually very old, is very well known, uh, and they have uh, they have pretty strong voice. Uh, and they are considered as uh, as a good partner for for officials and state administration. So if there is like for example some working group in environment and uh, under the Ministry uh, of the Environment, on um, it can be on air pollution or on nature protection, uh, they always actually ask Green Circle to uh, to provide a member uh, for this uh, for this working uh, for this working group and now i will talk a bit more about this um, coalition for rivers uh, from bosnia and herzegovina um, i will just very briefly introduce what is the problem i will not go into details but uh, so just that you have uh, like a basic overview um, so basically in Bosnia, there is like uh, 244 44 rivers and uh, that's the number of uh, hydropower plants that, uh, that are planned to be constructed, uh, which is more than 300. Um, <clears throat> this problem, it's uh, kind of long term. It's there started to be the pressure on a hydropower plant construction in like 2009. And since then, we are still fighting it. Uh, most of these hydropower plants are actually small hydropower plants, uh, but the problem is uh, the, the high number. Uh, another problem is that uh, the legislation on uh, environmental protection is very poor in Bosnia, and it's even worse in practice. So it can be good on paper, but in practice, it doesn't really work. So actually, the the impact that this uh, that these dams have is is huge, and the fourth problem it's actually the the type of hydropower plants that they are constructing. Uh, it's in ninety percent it's uh, so called derivation hydro, which means that uh, that you actually uh, build a small dam, 
then you took the water into derivation pipes and lead it out of the riverbed uh, for a few kilometers and then there is the turbine so together with this uh, with this uh, poor legislation on environmental protection it uh, in practice it really means that there are there are parts of riverbeds that uh, get completely dry <clears throat> so that's uh, the basic problem and of course, this has a big impact also on local communities because people basically uh, lose access to uh, um, to fresh water. Uh, this is just a few examples I wanted to show you how does it actually uh, how the construction looks like. So <clears throat> you can see very well that they are basically dry dry rivers. <clears throat> Here on the left, uh, you can see. Uh, uh, this is the, I'm sorry, I lost the English word. Um, this is for the fish, uh, fish ladder, I'm sorry. This is the fish ladder, which is completely out of water. Uh, but I will not talk much about this. This is just why I wanted to introduce why there was a need for the coalition. Sorry. Okay, I thought there was a question. Ah, but... made the Knuria coach from Kamun Zaknaria. Mm -hmm. She just gave the Armenian version of that fish uh, ladder. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm sorry. I also couldn't I couldn't remember. Um uh so basically uh in 2016 uh we established this coalition for rivers. Arnika was a member since the since the very beginning. Before that, there were like people worked on individual cases in different parts uh, parts of Bosnia. Uh, but since the problem was bigger and bigger, and there was still uh, there was still a pressure on more and more construction. Uh, we understood that there is a need to actually unite and to to act in unity and to to come with some strategy how to actually not only stop individual construction uh and individual cases but how to actually change the change the situation <clears throat> and I will say a little bit about the history and about some strong cases because this was something what uh, helped a lot. Uh, since the 2016, we had several very strong cases. These women are uh, women from a village of Kruščica. Uh, <clears throat> basically, uh, in this village, people learned about uh, about the, uh, the plans to, to build a small hydropower plant on their river. Uh, of course, they learned about it very late because uh, uh, the processes, uh, the provisions of Aarhus conventions uh, were violated. So the local community was actually not properly informed about the plans as they should be. They were not involved in the decision making uh, at all. So they learned about it uh, when these hydropower plants already had all permits issued. And they started to organize and protest. And basically they decided that they will not let them build this hydropower plants uh, on their river in any case. Uh, and they blocked uh, a bridge over, over the river, which was the only access point to the, to the construction site. And they were there for one year and a half, nonstop, basically day and night. The whole village took shifts. So during night there were men. During day there were women. <clears throat> and for one year and a half they were there. They they built like a small cottage next to the next to the bridge, and they will just uh, they were just guarding it. <clears throat> And meanwhile, we actually helped them with some legal steps. Uh, and at the end, the court actually annulled all the permits uh, for this uh, for this hydropower plants, exactly on the base that the local community was actually not involved into the decision making as there should be. 
and <clears throat> this is this is Maida Bilal, who actually one of the one of the women of Kurschica, who actually won the Goldman Environmental Prize for Europe in uh, 2021. So I wanted to mention this because these big cases actually helped a lot in terms of international support, in terms of PR, in terms of also like uh, giving energy to activists from other parts of Bosnia for their fights, because it was very inspiring, uh, inspiring, uh, inspiring case. And it was also recognized on the international level, as you can see. <clears throat> Another very strong case, for example, was um, was a case from of people on the from uh, around the Neretvica River. There were planned fifteen hydropower plants on this river, so you can imagine what what that means if you plan fifteen hydropower plants one after each other. You basically destroyed the whole river totally. Uh, so there were also many protests, many legal fights uh, against this, and after three years, actually, the investor itself gave up from the plans, and they say, okay, there is so much public pressure that we are not going uh, <clears throat> to pursue these constructions anymore. So these were things that really, really helped. And the last thing I wanted to mention uh, after all this, because there was so much, uh, so much, um, so much energy and uh, between the people and uh, <clears throat> that uh, things also started to change on the political level. So last year, actually, a uh, parliament of one part of Bosnia and, and Herzegovina uh, <clears throat> actually approved a moratorium on construction of another new small hydropower plant. And this would never be possible if we did not connect, if we did not create the coalition, uh, and if we did not have strategy uh, to actually change the things on more systematic levels. If we continue just to work on the cases, like one case from another and uh, and had no, no strategy how to change this uh, on higher level, this would never happen. So that's something what I wanted to mention actually as, uh, as an inspiration. And... Okay, uh, now I wanted to actually <laughs> go a little bit uh, into the lessons learned and uh, into the process of uh, coordination and strategy creating and so on. So one thing, establish common ground. Uh, I guess that's more or less clear. What does it mean in terms of this coalition? It meant that uh, they, we created a declaration that uh, each member has to agree with. Uh, it contains some basic missions, visions, some, uh, some basic values, also ways of work and, uh, and so on. So I think this is... This is uh, crucial, actually. There always has to be some kind of uh, joint position or declaration or something like that when you are creating a coalition of people, some some common ground that uh, people will agree on. Uh, <clears throat> communication, coordination, meeting, and sharing of experience are crucial when establishing coalition. Um, so basically, at the beginning, uh, when we created this coalition, we put a lot of energy into into all these processes, uh, which was extremely, extremely needed. So uh, we organized physical meetings, in-person meetings, uh, at least twice a year, uh, that sometimes took one day, sometimes they were longer, like two or three days longer, uh, because there was the need to actually discuss the strategy to uh, to discuss joint position and all these things and also get to know each other uh get to know what 
uh, <clears throat> also what plans uh, the people have for next period, what can they provide, what kind of expertise they have, uh, what are their needs. So uh, now we are not meeting that often. Uh, but uh, at the first phase of establishing this coalition, this was very crucial. Um, coordination. Uh, I wanted to just say that um, it's very important to uh, uh, to agree on some basic decision making processes especially when you are, for example, issuing a press release on behalf of the coalition or issuing some joint position. And then you have to make sure that uh, all the members actually agree. So it's good to create some decision-making process uh, about this. And we can talk if you, I don't want to go into like too many details about communication channels and exact processes and so on. But if you are interested in this, uh, we can of course talk about it in the discussion. And sharing of experience. Well, basically we organize a lot of workshops uh, and meetings uh, on different topics. Uh, very often on some uh, legal issues, basic things like uh, how to ask for information, what to do when there is uh, when you actually discover that they want to plan hydropower plants in your vicinity. What are the first steps that uh, you should do? How to approach uh, the institutions, things like that. Uh, also, we organize many workshop on on campaign planning and campaign leading, because without this, uh, the people wouldn't really know very well what to do. Uh, so I think this was uh, very useful. And uh, after like, it's a six, seven years since, till now, since we established this coalition, and there are definitely like people who thanks to this uh, grew in terms of, uh, of knowledge, in terms of, how to be a good activist, uh, how to actually approach this uh, this issue. Uh, the third point, there needs to be a leader. Um, I wanted to mention this. It doesn't mean like I didn't want to say there has to be like one person as a leader, uh, but it's uh, always good if there is, uh, if in the coalition, if the coalition is a mix of more experience NGOs and less experience NGOs or civic initiatives or activists. So by saying there needs to be a leader, I wanted to say there needs to be some uh, more experienced uh, people, more experienced NGO that can actually uh, provide some, some consultancy and help to uh, build this civic movement. Uh, you will need a strategy. <laughs> So basically, uh, this decision uh, about the moratorium uh, came because in 2019, we organized the conference. Uh, we made a list of demands on this conference where all the activists from Bosnia actually met. So we just sat together, got the list of uh, demands that, uh, that we want uh, and started to work on it. And it worked. So of course, if you have no strategy you cannot uh, achieve anything and this is very important uh, especially at the at the beginning uh, when you are when you are building uh, some some movements uh, you basically just need to know what do you want to achieve on higher level what do you want to achieve as a coalition because this is different that or should be different than what uh, the member organization want and can achieve uh, on their own. And last thing, uh, think about funding in the long term and consider legal subjectivity. Uh, this is a little bit what I mentioned at the beginning when I was talking about formal and informal coalitions. So basically, if you, uh, if you become a legal subject, uh, you can apply for grants that that are exactly for this, uh, for for building civic movements, for building umbrella organizations, for connecting people. Um, I wouldn't do that 
at the beginning like it's so it's it's a kind of a big step and then you also have to think like uh who will actually coordinate the coalition because then then usually you need to also <clears throat> Since you have uh, grants for development of the coalition, you need a person who will coordinate it, uh, all the projects and everything, and who will really put energy into uh, into building the coalition. So that's maybe a step that should be there after uh, after some years. Uh, but it's definitely good to consider to consider it and think about it, and it because it's very connected with uh, with the founding. Uh, otherwise, as I said, you you might be uh, you might depend on funding from the members. Of course, you can ask for membership fees. That's that's one option. But in case of informal coalitions, this is also problematic. Um, so yeah, just think about your funding strategy, uh, not just for next few months, but maybe for next few years and consider if it would help you to actually formalize the coalition and get legal subjectivity. And that's basically all from me for now. So thank you for attention. And if you have some questions, I will be happy to, to answer it or discuss more about whatever you want to. I see Oleg. Thank you very much for your presentation. I would like to speak a bit about Armenian experience to, to tell you about the problems that coalitions faced. As you said, there are formal and informal coalition. There are coalitions that un unites different NGOs, legal entities, and there are also coalitions that that are non-formal. Naturally, we have good examples of coalitions who have uh, huge achievements, but the Armenian experience shows that that the problems that the non that the problems that no formal coalitions face, they are also faced by formal coalitions. So we had an example when the leadership uh, was kind of deviated from the common ground. We had uh, cases when the coalition was passive because they had some problem with fundraising, or maybe there was a problem with crew communication, or maybe there, there weren't le real leaders who can who could take, take up the role of the leadership. But I think that each coalition can really think whether they want to become a legal entity or not. For example, now right now we are establishing a coalition of chemical safety. It unites 13, 14 NGOs, which are founding members of this coalition. And at, now we have a concept paper developed, which we are guiding with. But I want to know your experience of no formal coalitions. How no formal coalitions are managed or governed? Maybe you will bring the Czech experience or other countries' experience. What is the most efficient model of no formal coalition management or governance? How to make it work and how to evolve all the stakeholders to keep all the stakeholders involved in the management? I want to know, learn more about the management model and format, how to react more efficiently to the internal needs, external needs, external uh, challenges, timely, yeah, 
it's about timely reaction to the external and internal problems. And I don't mean just one person. It's not about the flexibility of, but it's about the mechanism. How to make the coalition work in spontaneously, naturally, like, yes. This is my question in general. Okay, uh, I'm not sure if I will be able to answer your question properly because all the things you actually mentioned, we are we are facing them as well. Like uh, the problems uh, are very similar. So I can only maybe tell you what uh, would help uh, uh, in this coalition for rivers in Bosnia in terms of coordination and management. And uh, as you said, so basically at the beginning, it was everything was very informal. And after some time, we decided, even though it's a non formal coalition, to create a board. So there was uh, election. There was a vote and five people were elected for the board and each person actually uh, had uh, some uh, some uh, was responsible for some area so one person for example was a very experienced lawyer so she was uh, she was responsible mainly uh, for re reacting on the uh, legal needs of the members. Another person was responsible for the overall coordination and communication and creating some communication channels. So this this was, for example, something what kind of worked in our case, and it really helped uh, improve the uh, improve the coordination and communication between between the members but it's uh it's not an uh, easy yeah there is no easy answer and i think it's also very cultural you know like what can work in the balkans might not work in the in your country or in my country because uh, people also work culturally a little bit differently so I guess you you have to try. What can I do? Like I can I can provide you uh with some documents we we had about uh about uh, coordination and about management and uh, all this. This is something what I could definitely send you, and you can see if this is something you could apply in the, in your coalition. Thank you. That would be great help and a great aid for us. Yes, hearts time. Arthur Bartazian, New Horizons. Arthur Bartazian from New Horizons NGO. I would li like to ask about long-term and short-term coalitions. What's, what's your experience in short-term coalitions and long-term coalitions? What are the advantages and the disadvantages of long-term and short-term coalitions based on your own experience? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for this question. Uh, this is actually something I didn't really mention, uh, but this uh, even uh, I, I presented this uh, coalition for rivers in Bosnia with many successes. I, I have to say that now when uh, uh, when the topic is not so hot anymore, the coalition is not very active anymore. So, which is, which I think it's somehow natural. So it was a coalition that was created uh, on the base of one important topic. And when this topic got exhausted, they started to be less active. Um, I am not sure what can be due to avoid this. Uh, probably if you have like very good strategy 
Uh, I mean, partly it's very natural that uh, you are facing one topic, uh, you kind of solve it, so you dissolve. If you want to keep the coalition and the energy, it can be difficult and you need to have a good strategy. What do you want to actually achieve after you, you solve these topics for which you were created? Which can be done, of course, because uh, the problems with the rivers in Bosnia are not only hydropower plants. There are many other problems connected to this. For example, like many of these areas should be protected and they are not. So this, if the coalition had like a really good strategy, like what they want to do after this to actually work again and again on improvement of the situation, I think uh, it could work, but we also didn't achieve this. So it can be very difficult. And sometimes it's not even needed that the coalition lasts for forever. Uh, in case of long-term coalition, this was the first example of the green circle. And it's very, very different because uh, this was... This is a coalition that actually works on its on its own. It has somehow its own agenda, which of course comes from the from the needs of the members. Uh, but there is this basic need that uh, the environmental sector in the Czech Republic wants to be represented by one strong coalition, uh, especially when it comes to negotiation on national level. So the topics kind of change and evolve, like some sometimes like it really depends also on what, uh, what are the actual topics on the government table, what are the cases that uh, uh, they work with. So it can uh, it can pretty differ, but it's always environmental environmental connected, and of course it requires a lot of coordination and a lot of discussion on what they should actually dedicate their energy to when they are going to talk with the ministries, with the government, and so on. These priorities can change over the years, but this is an example of long term coalition. Uh, so I would say like if you have like one specific short-term coalition basically work uh, on one specific topics that they need to need to solve and long-term coalition work more on uh, strategic topics and um, things like how the environmental sector will be will be seen by the public how it will be funded uh, what will be the and like overall environmental policy and its implementation in practice and these kind of things so i don't know i hope i answer partly your question but this is our experience with uh, long term and short term coalitions Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, Colson. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see, there are some other questions. Hi, oh, yes, and I'm hot. Yes, I have a question with some of the I'm interested. I'm with some from Youth NGO. I'm, I'm wondering when, when the coalition works more effectively, whenever they have more or fewer number of participants, larger number of participants or fewer number of participants. When mm -hmm. we can. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, I mean, each of this has its own challenges. If you have more members and more people, uh, you need to provide more time for discussion. There will be most probably more misunderstandings and you just need to dedicate much more time to coordination and discussion on uh, on joint position and topics. But on the other side, if you have more members, you are also stronger. And if you manage to actually uh, negotiate this discussion and act in unity, you can be seen as very, uh, very strong partner for the politicians, for the officials, uh, from for the people from the outside. So I don't think there is like easy question on uh, on this, or, like one of this works better or one of this work works uh, worse, but uh, it is 
its its own its own challenges. If you have small number of people and members, it's probably much easier. It's much easier to coordinate them, so you don't cha challenge you don't challenge this uh, this uh, problems with coordination but you can be also seen as uh, as non relevant if you are too small i wanted thank you i mean i wanted you to share more with your experience in this regard uh, in my experience, uh, I'm thinking about some example, but yeah, this is, uh, this is basically what I said, like, uh, for example, uh, in this case of, uh, of coalition for rivers in Bosnia, in the beginning, we were pretty small. So it was exactly what was happening. We were not really seen as that relevant uh, because if we organized the protest, there were dozens of people. Nobody really, really cared about it, you know? And uh, after some years and after this uh, strong cases that I presented, there were actually like, hundreds or thousands of people on our protest we appear to be like very uh very strong and uh, uh very powerful but we also started to 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 have a lot of problems within the coalitions because people had uh, different views people had different needs and there also started to be some personal fights and misunderstandings and you know, for example, uh, uh, when Maeda Bilal won this uh, Goldman Prize uh, for the women uh, of Kurchisa, this was a huge thing in terms of international PR and in the whole fight, and it really helped to push the to push uh, the topic. Uh, but on the other side, it brought a lot of a uh, lot of conflicts within the community. Because uh, basically, that's how the Goldman uh, Foundation work. They they choose one person, so they chose Maida as as the leading person after a lot of um, communication between between many people and a lot of consultancy. But it was actually not only her fight; it was the fight for the whole community. So it brought a, a lot of personal misunderstandings. So this is, for example, one case when I can think about some, like giving you some practical examples, which actually also shows on what I said. And it's it can be. I think it's kind of impossible to prevent it because we are just people. And of course, if we are more, we will have different opinions, different ideas. Like the only thing you can do is to provide a lot of things for discussions, for facilitations, maybe sometimes also involve an external facilitator to actually uh, get people to solve their their personal issues and get them again on the on. The same board, but this is natural that it is happening. Thank you. Yes, hard to name them. Question from Julia. Uh, Susanna, Julia has a question. Uh, yes. Shnara Kalutyun, Julia NMCCMS, it's not it. Zer praktika, it's zer praktika, it's yel no. Based on your experience and practice. Which are the best uh, communication channels between the coalition members, based on your own experience? Uh, for us, it really worked Viber 
which is I don't know if you use Viber in your country or Telegram or WhatsApp. That uh, that was something that uh, helped us a lot for some fast coordination and communication. For example, if there is a need to issue a press release very very fastly, this is a fast way how to how to reach people. So. Uh, creating a group on some of this platform can be good uh, good thing uh, for communication and this kind of work for us uh, uh, also like uh, in uh, <clears throat> together with uh, with email communication which is used for more some like formal messages or for sending some uh, some news for communication that does not need to be so fast but for fast communication when we started this viber group it it uh, helped quite a lot thank you how much thank you for your response just recently there were some rumors that viber is not a safe platform in case of information exchange, there can be some information leakage, mm -hmm. and there there is a yeah high possibility of having information leak, uh, leak leakage leak in case of using this platform. Yeah, you can. I mean, I I agree. <laughs> This is this is exactly the cultural thing that I was talking about. Like in the Balkans, they use Viber, and it's uh, even though that uh, uh, we did uh, we did actually uh, try to inform the people about about exactly this. What you said that it's not so safe. It would be much better to do it on Signal or Telegram. They still insisted to use Viber because everybody from the Balkans is Viber. So, but I agree with you. That's that's not the best uh, channel in terms of security. Uh, I meant it more in terms of like, you can use, choose whatever you want and uh, something what is uh, much more secure as Signal, for example, but uh, I refer to it mainly in terms of, uh, uh, of form. Thank you so much for sharing. I just raised my hand that Inga was uh, had had her hand risen, but she didn't receive any forum but now it's off but now she, i guess she had something to say i just wanted to say i had no question as a remark i wanted to make a remark i wanted to say that we shouldn't avoid coalition we shouldn't avoid co dissolution of coalition or change of coalition it's a natural life process and so when there is a problem and when you get united to solve this problem and as soon as this problem is solved is solved it's a normal process to have the coalition less active the second thing for the efficient operation of the coalition to solve one specific problem you need a technical instrumentation to have it worked you need to have one working platform where you can communicate for example chats there are, if the if the there are groups on the chats if they are not very big one, they are very efficient. Anyway, chats, for example, are very good way of communication. We just need to find a normal 
operating platform. We need to understand first how to establish this heart. It may be not one platform, but several platforms to see which one it really works for us. And then already concentrate only on one platform. And the second, I do think we must have a coordinator. I do understand that I like all the time focuses on the participation of all the partners, but we must have a coordinator to motivate everyone to work. We can also change the coordinator. We can have coordinator for one year, or we can have different uh, coordinators with different responsibilities. But we may must have some kind of instrumentation uh, for and or mechanism for efficient operation. So that's all I want to say. Thank you. I, I think I agree with everything what you said. And uh, yes, this uh, this also this coalition for rivers, the Bosnian one does have a coordinator or as I explained to Oleg later on, it was uh, it was changed into coordination board because uh, it started to be bigger and bigger. So each person has uh, is responsible for one field, but it is very important. And everything you said before, I mean, I agree. So thank you. Okay, uh, if there aren't uh, any more questions or remarks, uh, I guess uh, that also also many uh, many of the possible questions would be would be answered in Radex presentation, which would be uh, I guess more focused on on uh, organization as such and about some uh, even some theory of organization and strategic planning. So maybe we can move on to on to do this next se segment. Yep. Can you see the presentation right now? Yes. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Uh, sorry for a little complication. Hello, my name is uh, Radek Kubala. I'm from Reset. Uh, it's a Czech-based NGO. We are uh, something like we call ourselves think and do tank as uh, we are trying to support the grassroots movements as much as possible and also most of us uh, are from the grassroots movement especially from the climate justice movement uh, i was uh, uh, par i'm part of the climate justice movement for more like eight years and uh, in czech republic i was working working mostly on uh, coal phase out uh, Call phase out uh, case uh, and uh, the question of the coal in Czech Republic. And yeah, through these years, I was part of uh, many coalitions, uh, also some campaign coalition, but also some international umbrella coalition and also some national umbrella coalition. Uh, I will try to share with you some important things that I think are necessary to know um, and I will be trying to be as uh, much practical as it is possible because I understand that what you need is to know uh, some basic uh, things, how to form coalition and how to be in coalition and how to work as a coalition. So my first slide is uh, some basic necessities or basic things that are important to know if you are trying to form a coalition that uh, must be efficient or or good. First one is actually the patience. Um, mostly, it's it's not easy to form a coalition and to work in a coalition. And in this, uh, uh, if you are coordinating with uh, coordinating with other people, you need to uh, have in mind that um, that uh, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it takes time. Sometimes there are long discussions and uh, and uh, long uh, period when when you are trying to um, when you are uh, trying to understand each other and these things and it needs a patience uh, and a lot of patience. 
and uh, also yeah it, what you need is a good coordination it is a good coordination because uh, and I will be talking about it uh, uh, a little bit in I think other slide uh, it's b because yeah uh, if you are forming coalition as I said it's really hard but you need to be coordinated well you need to have uh, people and structures that are meant only to uh, coordinate things because putting these things together are, are really hard. Uh, also, as I mentioned, don't forget to have time for discussions and uh, be prepared that that some of them can be really long and really hard and, and sometimes emotional. Keep in mind also that it's good to think about delegation of the work because uh, especially in uh, coalitions when there are many groups and many groups have a lot of people and uh, uh, if uh, everyone in every group are doing the coalition works uh, uh, then it can be some something like mass and some kind of chaos so keep in mind that uh, there can be some uh, position uh, of people uh, or uh, think about how to delegate the work that, that not everyone is doing everything but to make it efficient uh, that uh, to have uh, have a different roles in the coalition and think about it that way that uh, you don't need to um, do everything as, as a person but it's good to uh, de delegate the work uh, between the groups between the between the different people but if you want to do that and this is i think most important thing for forming coalition and it's a trust and it's not easy to build the trust but uh, I think that the most important thing for a really good coalition is to uh, build um, build the trust among the different actors and different people uh, that are important in, in the coalition work. Mostly it's the part that a lot of coalitions are not thinking about so much uh, because mostly it's like that you build a coalition and uh, you start to do things and start to uh, but these internal processes this this trust building the coordination the internal discussions that are not uh, visible in the campaigns mostly but they are really important uh, for strengthening the coalition and they are i think the most important part of uh, of a strong and efficient coalition so don't forget uh, also this uh, internal work internal trust uh, uh, trust building um, and yeah of course be be ready that sometimes it can be a little bit chaotic because uh, yeah a lot of uh, especially more uh, actors are involved the more um, the more um, chaos is there and also uh, other different groups have uh, different opinions and different things but uh, I liked the quote that I heard from uh, one Canadian activist uh, as she was working in uh, Leap Manifesto coalitions and it was a very broad coalitions between climate justice activists and uh, unions and other, other different part of groups and she said that if uh, you are uh, if you are only agree on everything with each other then your uh, your question is not broad enough so keep in mind that uh, sometimes it can be chaos sometimes it uh, there are hard discussions and everything but uh, uh, most mostly if there is some internal trust between the actors that you have a common goal then uh, you can build a really broad coalition even though there are some uh, differences uh, differences among you so this is some basic things to set but how to do it uh, there was also some questions in the debate that i will try to answer also right now how to be to make the practical things yeah the one uh, most important thing is to think about the communication channel um through the years, I think what uh, was the most efficient ways in the communication channels is that uh, we have some, uh, and I, what I think works for us is uh, that you have some two types of uh, communication channels that you are using in the coalition, but also 
and, to, and, there, and, and it's a combination of one direct messaging, like we are using Signal for it because it's most secure way, but it's the, the type of things where you are for some more informal discussions and when you can share some uh, re and really fast and f things that is used for really fast coordination. And, uh, and you can also uh, uh, write there some memes or some uh, some jokes or something like that that is uh, helping uh, uh, growing the atmosphere in the coalition. And the second channel that is more like the forum or some uh, kind of things where uh, the uh, where for some broader discussion and some for, for some where you can write some. Uh, much longer uh, longer text than you are using in this in this direct channel uh, i will tell you how we are uh, working with uh, with forum soon at the, at the next slide but it's but uh, this is what worked for us uh, but i know a lot of coalitions that are using different types of uh, of uh, of communication channels like a Czech climate coalition is using slack as a as a main tool and uh, yeah, some groups that are more informal are using only the direct uh, messaging uh, channels like the Signal or something like that. But most efficient, I think, is uh, to try to be at the channel that people are already using and that are uh, most uh, common for them. Of course, it depends how much you must hide what you are doing if you are afraid. Uh, if you are afraid, uh, if you are afraid uh, of the security, then it also makes sense to use the signal, but uh, the, the signal app. But uh, yeah, for example, if everyone is on, if you don't need to have as much secured communication, and everyone is on Messenger, everyone who want to be involved, then then use Messenger. It's like that. Uh, from time to time, uh, because of the security concern. Uh, security concern um, create things like that. The communications end to be uh, start tend to be not uh, efficient and not uh, not uh, uh, inclusive for everyone. So it's like the my advice is to um, it, my advice is to use the channel that people are already using. So it's more natural for them to join and and so on. Uh, also, other good effective tools is it's really good to have some coordinator positions. Uh, uh, sometimes it's a paid position if you have money for that. But uh, there, there, it's uh, Zuzana told leader leaders. I think it's more uh, for me. It's more like the coordinator person, somebody who is uh, yeah, in contact with. Um, uh, with everyone in the in the network, everyone in the coalition who knows. Uh, who understand how each group works, what each group needs, what each people needs, and so on, and is trying to putting things together. For example, trying to organize, uh, organize the, organize the meetings, organize calls, and so on. It's good to think about it. It can be one person, or it can be more person. It can be I don't know group of person, but it's uh, it and it can be working group like something like coordination working group or something like that. But it's good to have in mind that you need to have a capacity uh, that you need to have a capacity for um, uh, for coordination and you need to have people who are thinking only about the coordination and how to putting things together. Also, from um, perspective of different groups in coalition, it's good to have some. Think like the responsible person, uh, because yeah, uh, and, and uh, because uh, yeah, as I said, it's the part of the delegation of the work that I was talking before. But it's like most uh, our, our groups are doing uh, different things, and a lot of people are doing also different campaigns and so on. And uh, it's good to have somebody who has in his or her mind. Uh, the coalition and the coalition processes and and everything and uh, and so uh, that uh, everyone don't need to uh, uh, be in all processes and you, but you can have one person that uh, understand the processes that are going in the coalition that understand and that that can inform each uh, the other person in the group 
that can in inform other what is happening and trying to get the information from the group. So uh, somebody who is in the contact with the with the coalition. So no, not everyone needs to be over over overwhelmed by everything what is going on in the in the coalition. So it's also good to have. Um, what I think is important is to have some kind of regular calls, uh, at least monthly or once or two months or something like that, uh, just to uh, be in the in the question. It's like that in the question we are part of, like the Ensure Our Future. Uh, it's an international coalition. Then one month we have a, we have a call where we. Uh, are telling updates from each groups and discussing the common strategy and so on. And it's good to have uh, the, these uh, regular calls so everyone see that the coalition is uh, working and uh, everyone can meet each other, the calls can uh, understand each other and so on. And also, Susanna mentioned it, but what I think is really important is uh, to have uh, some in-person meeting and to see each other in uh, offline wor world. It's it's uh, the part of this trust building I, I was working because if you are uh, wor if you are trying to have the coalition uh, this trust building is really important and you need to know the people understand them uh, you need to have some kind of exchanges but and it's something what you cannot build only on uh, online but you need to uh, spend some time with the people have some uh, have some relationships together and so on so the in person meetings are uh, are really important uh, it depends uh, where the people are living if you are in the same city if you are all in the same city and building a city based coalition it makes sense to have a in person meeting every two weeks but if you are in the whole country or a whole region then it makes sense to uh, organize in-person meeting once or twice a year or something like that. Uh, depends on, on the occasion, but I think these in-person meetings are are important and crucial part of coalition building. And from time to time, as we are oriented on the campaign, as we are oriented on the outcomes and so on, we are not uh, thinking so deeply about this, uh, this uh, these things. and and building these uh, relationships together and uh, i think it's important this is as i mentioned uh, this is the forum we are using as reset as the organizations you can see there are different topics and uh, this is one of as i was talking about the sec about the two com main communication channels we are using this this is the thing where you are going for the big discussions or you are going to uh uh, uh, and you are going to um, discuss uh, with with others things that you know that will not uh, disappear, like in the direct because in direct messaging, a lot of things will disappear in time because. Uh, but this is the place where you can store all the information. It's provided by the Czech uh, Czech uh, organizations. They are called called NoLog, and it's possible they are helping the movements around the world uh, with the communication channels and things like that and if you contact them maybe they will have time to and they have some kind of template for this uh, kind of forum that you can also use uh, it's a very good uh, way how to use the communication channels and so this is one of our communication channel and the second one is the signal for direct messaging uh, short-term uh, fast communication if you need it some jokes and and things like that this is as i mentioned this is the slack of czech climate coalitions it's also possible it's the only channel that the climate czech climate coalition is using and it's also somehow structured uh, and somehow is working but keep in mind that you need to have the coordination person or coordination uh, group as i mentioned who is uh, structuring also the communication channel so uh, that you know that uh, you can see on the left that there are some working groups or something like that. Um, but you need to have somebody who is structuring also the communication channel. So keep it in mind. What I want to talk today also uh, is to how to think about the strategy. 
I will tell you some some things, and these are my two favorite quotes about the strategy and why the strategy is uh, really important to have a strategy as a coalition or as a group. Uh, what is strategy is uh, my favorite quote from Marshall Gantz, uh, how we turn what we have right now into what we need to get what we want. So this is basically the strategy. You have something, but uh, you must know what you need to get what you want and to try to build on it. And but my most uh, favorite uh, quote about strategy is that if you don't have any strategy, then most probably you are part of someone else's strategy. So if you don't know your way, you don't know what you are doing, you don't know why you are doing the things you are doing, it's you are really vulnerable and it's really easy for uh, somebody who has strategy to use you as uh, as their strategy. So it's this is I think really a thing that you why why I think each groups and each coalitions and everything needs to have a strategy. I will try to keep it short because uh, uh, about how to build a strategy, it, we can talk about it for for hours. But uh, what is really good and for each coalition uh, and groups to start with the strategy is to think about your objectives. Uh, what are the objectives that you want to achieve? If you are fighting some uh, some project, mostly it's to stop the project or something like that. But it can be also, but uh, these are mostly the campaign objectives, but it can be also, you can also uh, set some objectives for uh, for you as a coalition. You can think about it like way that uh, you will set the objective that uh, in a year we will have two more groups that will join our coalition and you will start to work on that. And this, uh, or we will have a, to in-person meetings when uh, and after this meet and uh, each of these meetings we will uh, we will we will use this meeting to build the trust among us and build the relationships between us and uh, so it also you can have a uh, part of uh, objectives that are going uh, uh, inside the coalition and, and and so on how we think about the objectives and it's good to uh, to think about them that way is to have some some kind of short term, mid term, and long term objectives. Like the short term, uh, something what you can achieve in I don't know year or really short uh, short time. But uh, it's good to have also some mid term, like in three years or four years, what uh, what do you want to achieve, and also some long term objectives if you are thinking about how to. Uh, influence the society or how to change uh, things uh, in in your country or in uh, society in general then it's also good to have the long term objectives and some kind of a vision that you are going uh, going to, to to the vision and to think like also about the short term uh, objectives to think about them like uh, and and keeping questions like yeah are they are the short term objectives the way how we are doing our long term objectives? Is it the, is it the way? So yeah, it is. Uh, and uh, uh, strategy mostly what the strategy uh, is is uh, to thinking about the way how to achieve those objectives. So uh, uh, mostly it uh, it's like that uh, in the and I know it also from the grassroots movement in Czech Republic. Mostly, if you think about the uh, 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 about the things you are doing, it's like that first thing what you think is uh, like, yeah, let's uh, have a protest or let's have a demonstration or let's have a petition or something like that. But the strategical thinking and why I think strategy is important is uh, that uh, you, uh, first things when you uh, think about your activities is why we are doing this, why we are doing uh, protest, why we are doing petitions. Uh, and to f and this is the first strategy question that uh, every coalition and every group needs to question because, uh, because uh, yeah, uh, because, yeah, mostly it's not efficient just to uh, create protest for protest, but it's good to think about how the protest fit into our strategy, how to protest fit into uh, the longer uh, road that we are going to to uh, uh, in in the campaign and and so on. And uh, maybe we can get into discussion. I hope it's not so much confusing. 
Uh, but the, uh, also there is one thing that is, I think, really important for campaign building, and it's that you need to keep in mind something what we call ecology of movement. Um, it's like that uh, most of the, uh, uh, you can see now two pictures. One is uh, how the how uh, the coalition sometimes work, that you have some uh, some uh, group that is on the top and there are groups that are uh, that are different but most uh, most efficient for the movements what i think is uh, to think about it as like some kind of ecology of the movement like there are different groups that have different relationships and what is really important that they have uh, different uh, things of doing things and it's the uh, also, the really important thing that I want you to remember is that uh, even that uh, uh, if you have a good coalition, that means that you have uh, there are the groups that are, for example, more radical than each other that, than the different one, or that are some are uh, focused on the local level, some are focused on national level, and or some uh, are doing the different things, but. Um, even though you, for example, don't do the things like the other actors in the in the coalition, keep in mind that this uh, ecology of movement, and keep in mind that uh, uh, it's something what you want to achieve actually, because it makes you stronger. Uh, if you have uh, coalitions where there are different actors and everyone are doing the things a little bit differently, see the things uh, uh, differently. Uh, it, are, for example, more radical groups uh, are uh, there and also some groups that are not so radical, that it is something what is uh, helping you to achieve goals because uh, uh, it's like in the nature when uh, uh, the uh, more diverse the, uh, the ecosystems are, the more stronger and sustainable the ecosystems are and in movement it's, it's, uh, it's, it's like that don't uh, don't uh, think that in the that the best coalitions is where everyone agreed or uh, agree on act on all activities on all strategies and everything sometimes it's uh, the best way how to achieve the goals is to have a, uh, have a diverse uh, ecology uh, ecology of the movement diverse uh, actors in in your coalitions and don't uh, uh, yeah, don't uh, be afraid to build uh, coalitions also also on this. I will, yeah, I will give you one um, uh, thing uh, that I think is really important in thinking about the strategy and one model that I really like, uh, and it is something what you can do in your coalition or you in, in the group uh, quite uh, uh, quite often or something like that. And it's uh, my favorite model, how to think about the power. Um, on the left part of the picture, you can see how we traditionally see uh, the power. It's like that somebody is on the top and uh, flows down the, uh, the flow downs, uh, what needs to be done, flow downs, the laws and, and, and everything, who's on the power. And we are uh, at the bottom seeing the people up are uh, there but actually it's not the way how the uh, power work uh, and for you uh, uh, thinking about how uh, to uh, how thinking about strategy it's more relevant and more important to um, uh, to uh, put this triangle uh, on, on differently on the on the other side that you uh, and uh, you will you can see and we call it people power model and it's like that uh, mostly the societies are built on the power of the people and uh, uh, and the people who are giving the people who are rules some kind of uh, justification and so on and if you are uh, seeing it like that you can see that the power have a lot of pillars of support a lot of uh, some uh, some pillars on uh, how the how the how the power is working, and this is a part of strategic thinking that can be good for you to think about uh, uh, in in coalitions and in your groups. Is uh, to try to understand it, these pillars and try to write what are the pillars uh, of it. For example, and I can give you one example to make it more clear. 
uh, in the uh, anti-coal movement in Europe, uh, there was uh, this uh, type of uh, strategic processes where people were thinking what are uh, the pillars that are uh, putting the coal uh, industry in the power. And for example, in these processes, people were thinking like, yeah, one of these pillars are banks and uh, insurance companies. Let's focus on the banks and insurance companies and let's uh, try to... Uh, try to uh, use, uh, try to uh, attack this pillar and uh, th because this is something what the coal uh, power uh, or, or the coal, uh, the power of the coal uh, business is uh, built and the, their, the, uh, the movement, the climate movement start to uh, target the banks and insurance and it, it was uh, really, uh, really good. Um, and efficient strategy. So if you are facing somebody who is in power, mostly the politicians or the some companies or something like that, you can uh, draw this uh, picture of, of the triangle and think what are the pillars of support that, uh, that, uh, 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 that are justifying the, the power of this actor and try to intervene in these pillars of, of support and, and, and so on. There was also a question about the fundraising, how to make money for a coalition. Uh, also, Susan mentioned something, but yeah, it's like that depends uh, depends uh, which type of coalition you have. If it is uh, informal coalitions, then it's harder. You can have some kind of membership fees or you can start to work on individual fundraising like you are having the com communication campaigns, for example, asking people to send you some money but easier it's to uh, contact some funders uh, uh, who can uh, give you money on some projects but yeah as Susanna mentioned mostly you need to have some legal entity but it also and if you have legal entity you need to have this all these legal things like board and and something like that but I also was part of coalitions when it was like that the legal entity was just fun for fundraising. And even though there was something like board uh, or stuff like that, that these people really don't had the, uh, the real power to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to make orders and, and all these things. But actually Reset is working like that. We have the legal entity, but, uh, uh, but we in, inside we are uh, trying to be uh, informal and trying to be non-hierarchical and build on the discussions. But we have uh, this board because we need to have this uh, this board as a legal entity. But this board don't have uh, uh, something like the power on on the group. But as I said, it you can build something like that uh, only if you have trust with uh, in the, in the coalition and you have trust with with uh, building trust with with other people then uh, this uh, board board and this legal entity can be something like the first aid or only for the for the, for the funders uh, funders like that but it's it's the mo this free this free um, this free fa things are i think most uh, common way how to fundraise the money for a coalition membership fee some uh, projects with funders or individual fundraising yeah there are two uh, examples uh, one is um, this is the climate coalition and it's um, uh, from from Czech Republic and as you can see this is how you can build the trust it's the personal meeting where people are trying to be nice on each other even though there are people from uh, from I don't know how much groups are in the Czech Climate Coalition, but definitely around 30 or 40 organizations. Most of them are uh, meeting twice a year at the at the uh, at the in-person meetings, and and from time to time they are uh, they are meeting also online. Um, and the Czech Climate Coalition have two coordinators. Uh, and paid uh, people who are uh, trying to coordinate all the all the diff all the all the other groups 
trying to um, trying to uh, yeah put things together. As I said, it's really important to have this this type of person. And the Czech Climate Coalition is working uh, this way that they have two people who are in communication with all the actors, uh, trying to put things together, organize the meetings, organize the calls, and and, and so on. So this is the way how the Czech Climate Coalition is working. And there is also one uh, example that I like, and it's the Czech uh, call phase out call, let's say coalition or some kind of. Um, it was more like informal, or, but there was also the working group that was working in the uh, under the climate coalition under the umbrella of the climate coalition. But I see this coalition more like uh, more like. Uh, um, more informal and one of the reason why uh, this coalition was strong and why we were able and the coal uh, industry in Czech Republic uh, was and still is one of the most powerful structure in, in Czech Republic and but we were able to face them for and we were able for uh, to uh, we were able to achieve a lot in in the struggle uh, in 2015, it seems that the coal business and uh, the coal mining and burning of coal in Czech Republic will uh, last until 2100. And now we have a coal phase out date in 2033. And I think one of the reasons is that we had this uh, diverse coalition. And you can see on the pictures uh, on the left, you can see I'm people from the big NGOs. Yeah. OK, so. I will continue. It's the last slide, so soon we will uh, have a discussion. But uh, yeah, as I said, this uh, Czech coal phase-out coalition was really diverse. Uh, on the left, you can see people from big NGOs that are negotiating with a uh, Czech prime minister, who was the time. Uh, on the bottom, you can see the protest of a uh, Czech uh, Czech uh, Fridays for Future, the big uh, protest and uh, mass mobilizations in the streets. And uh, uh, on the right uh, up, you can see uh, direct action, uh, direct action and civil disobedience in uh, coal mine in coal mine Bielina. This was in Czech Republic, which uh, uh, so you can see there were like three totally different actors. Um, the actors. Uh, uh, that uh, use the different strategies, use different tactics. Some of them were more radical than than others, but we in this coalition were discussing together, even though we were uh, really different. Uh, we were doing the different things, but we had uh, among ourselves we have a co we had the coordinations. We've been discussing about the next steps, where to be, when to be more radical, when to uh, discuss with the power, and so on. And uh, one of the reasons why I think this coalition was really successful in Czech Republic was that uh, it, uh, uh, as I said, um, the reason why I think the call phase out coalition in Czech Republic worked really well was that we had the different type of actors uh, that uh, had to use the different type of uh, radicality somewhere. Uh, discussing that uh, were in the discussion with uh, with the people in power, like the people from big NGOs, with uh, Czech Prime Minister. Some were focusing more on uh, on uh, um, organizing big protests, mass protests like Fridays for Future in Czech Republic. Some were also focusing on uh, direct actions of civil disobedience uh, in Komais and so on. And it was, I think, one of the re uh, reason why uh, it worked so well was that we had the communication channels between ourselves. We've been uh, in some of this kind of coalition, uh, building trust between each other uh, and uh, meeting each other, uh, this, even though we were quite different and we used the different tactics different with different level of uh, radicality than... Uh, then we were able to coordinate between ourselves and it makes this coalition really efficient and really 
really uh, good work in and we were able to achieve a lot of goals uh, in the struggle be- against the uh, coal uh, industry that was one of the most powerful in uh, in Czech Republic. So yeah, uh, that's uh, all from my side. Thank you very much for your attention and uh, sorry for the technical problems. I hope is uh, I hope it's worked at least somehow. If if there are questions, I can help to uh, translate for now. Yes, thank you very much. That would be probably probably optimal. Uh, there's like uh, nothing I can really do uh, do with this issue. Arus arus jak Yes, <laughs> Um, Transpatas Hanner, Absosu Wagi, Yegor Masi, Ambochen Tatskum, Tarkmanchan Hantira Kar, Tarkmanichemat Gunumeriev, Heter Galis, Heton Tarapes Kora, Shat Absos, Yeska Hantrem Yete Nara Vorlini, Presentation Vorvor Nerkayat Sumer, Uwar Permes, Yete da Karelia, or Pizimank Nayank Nayab, I think, and Yev Nayab. Shat love Kerni or Pizinaev, Kapunenang, concrete port sagetti head, yet ensure hard serunenang. That's good. Uh, I will try to translate uh, translate what Oleg says. Uh, at first, uh, he wants to thank for the second part, especially because it was. Uh, very informative, even though uh, the translation wasn't so uh, good from the point of connection, uh, because Arusiak was here, uh, we couldn't uh, hear her very good, and then uh, we couldn't hear anything and didn't understand some part of the uh, of the speech of Radek. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's very good that there were many questions and uh, Oleg also asks to send the presentation, if it's possible, later to get acquainted with it. And also, um, uh, he's worried if it's possible to be in connection uh, with the experts, if there is uh, any need for support or consultation. Thank you. Yeah, I think that uh, definitely we can send around the presentation and i can send uh, i can write my uh, my email and if you will have some kind of questions or something that i can help with then definitely you can send me a message or, or something like that thank okay. you so much that would be very helpful um uh, Radek Asume, Vorin Kam by Manku Harki Presentation, Yev Naev Gret Arten Ijmele, Vor PC, Kariki Deb Kumira Head Cup has nothing. Ayo, Ayo, Himalas Fumetzer Tena. Make him other swimming. Okay. So uh, and they already can hear me. Uh, Dian, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you.
I'm saying that I'm apologizing for the technical problem, but I really couldn't figure out why it's like that because the internet connection is stable and whatever. Anyway. I think it's some general issue of the connection because almost all of us have, uh, have this uh, connection things now. Uh, the internet in our office is also not so good, so probably it's a general thing. Okay, uh, so um, we are probably uh, have just uh, just a bit luck concerning uh, concerning this uh, language and translation stuff, uh, and uh, also we are quite uh, running short of uh, short of time. Uh, so maybe I can. Uh, so maybe I will just uh, uh, ask you if uh, there is uh, any further like questions or remarks. And uh, yes. And if not, uh, then I just want to say a huge thank you all. Uh, oh, I see, I see the hand up. Uh, <coughs> uh, yes, no, <laughs> Եվ ինձ թումա մենք ընթացքում հարցեր կունենանք, որոնք ուղեն։ Անպես որ բավականաչյան ինվորմատիվ էր և այն մենք փորձենք արդեն հասկանդիվ ինչպես ենք նաև շնորակալությունը ձեզ։ Մեր բոլոր անունից եկեք էին Ալեք ասեց նորակալություն մենք էլ Ալեք said thank you for, on behalf of all of us we would like to join us and we would really it would be great if we could if we could collaborate in the future thank you and bye to you thank you bye